for a second. Yes. I'd like to bring Peter Sinclair. Peter's just come back from Greenland. I'm yeah, he, was full of pork. he was just there. I was supposed to be there with him and couldn't go, so I want to hear what's going on. Is it yeah. green these days? Uh, it, well, you know, there's parts that are green. Uh, there's a there's a, a coastal strip that's uh, well, it's it's rocks covered with green stuff. Uh, but uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to be part of a team that went up to Greenland, uh, uh, including Dr. Jason Box, who's one of the world's foremost experts on uh, the Greenland ice sheet. The Greenland ice sheet, uh, if you don't know, is uh, is uh, it's basically an ice cube uh, about three times the size of Texas and contains, if we melted it, enough water to uh, raise sea level about 22 feet. And nobody thinks that, that that's going to happen anytime soon. But the fact is, uh, yeah, yeah, more and more of it is, uh, and the Arctic is warming about twice as fast as the rest of the planet. And uh, as it warms, that ice has been starting to move a lot faster than what uh, people would have thought just a few years ago. And um, I, I just wanted to get, kind of give you an, a, a little bit of an appreciation of why scientists are concerned and uh, uh, how it is that that ice sheet uh, is, is starting to move and how that movement is sort of feeding on itself. Uh, you know, they say uh, in Washington, if you want to know what, what's going on, you got to follow the money. Uh, in Greenland, if you want to know what's going on, um, well, you follow the money up there too, but if you want to know what's going on in the ice sheet, you follow the water. And the way that works is as we pump CO2 in the atmosphere, it gets warmer, and more and more of that ice sheet begins to warm up in the summertime. And as it does, uh, it actually begins to get darker because the snow begins to melt and the snowflakes break down and they reflect less light and so it begins to absorb more heat and so it starts to melt faster and as it melts these lakes start to form on the surface and you may see, have seen pictures of these uh, just dazzling blue lakes well they're darker than the rest of the ice sheet so they begin to act like solar collectors and they pull in even more heat so the ice gets softer at the bottom of those lakes and sooner or later they break through. They break through the ice and they start heading up down a kilometer or two into the ice and as they go down they bring that heat down deep into the ice, softening it and making it move faster as they go down. When the water gets to the bottom, to the bedrock, water is a non-compressible fluid so it gets to the bedrock and it actually lubricates and makes the ice begin to flow faster. And even some of the very thickest parts of the ice are starting to move faster. Well, the water continues on, eventually, a lot of it finds its way to one of these outflow glaciers. Uh, and it squirts out the bottom underneath the water line. And what happens is it creates a turbulence down there. And the turbulence draws in warm ocean water that starts to eat away at the front of that glacier and then makes it begin to calve icebergs off faster and faster. And every time that, that glacier calves, it propagates a wave that goes all the way back up into the center of the ice sheet and makes it move even faster. As it moves faster, it tends to start cracking at the surface. Each one of these cracks in turn becomes yet another solar collector because it opens up more area for the sun to beat down on. As the sun beats down on it, the water melts and goes down to the bottom of these cracks. And of course, water is heavier than ice, so it begins to actually fracture its way down into the ice sheet. So the ironic thing is that as we're doing this process down here in the temperate zone that we call hydrofracking to get more fossil fuels to pump up in the air and increase the CO2 and make it warmer, nature is in turn hydrofracking the Greenland ice sheet. Okay, so uh, so all of these processes are called positive feedbacks by scientists. Except uh, they're not really. That's not really a positive thing for us. So you can think of it more like a vicious cycle, and they all kind of feed back into each other. Each one sort of makes the other one move faster. 
And so this is the concern, and this is why uh, Greenland has lost, the, the mass lost from the Greenland ice sheet uh, melted into the ocean has doubled over the last decade. And that's one of the reasons that we were up there, and it's something called the Dark Snow Project. A uh, group of scientists, uh, we, and, and we're doing something special, trying to do uh, media, trying to uh, do social media and, uh, and, and outreach and get the story out without having to wait two or three years for the scientists to publish their papers so that people can know what's going on.